Caught it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a champion that can have so much power in the bot side of the map. Finally, we're getting to see it in Europe. Incredibly excited to see it come through from Noah and Jun because you look at the threat of Ash Rumble. But still scared of Oscar Rinnan. He's got a massive health advantage. I mean, just a, that's a huge wave in there, even on CS. He's doing a great job in terms of the 1v1. Nice. Humanoid winning out on these uh, trades, though. Caps goes again. Wait, Singularity's Whoa, wait out. Wait for the Breath of Light. Humanoid might die, but no! Just presses QW. Caps starting. The greatest of respect. They're aware of how volatile this bot lane can be. And they're respecting it. Humanoid shockwave. Oh, it's big damage as well. I mean, Caps, the sky's going to fall, but Humanoid flushes out of the way. But here's Retribution. Caps has a bit of help from going to force it. All right, but hang on, Yike has been left alone here. A bit of trading between the bot laners. Nice damage from Hans, even and the better. Burn. Wait, Jun can kill him. Jun can kill him. He flashes out of the way. He's overheated. No one finishes off the job. Yes, he does. Even with the flash away, Jun now going to be traded off. But the sky is descending in a different way this time. It's lightning from Yike to bite time as Razok jumps in. One, two, and three, but onto Mickey X instead. The range there from Noah. Good damage, but still there. Mickey playing so aggro. He's available. A tool we all know too well through League of Legends. Engage from G2 starts us off. Sky Splitter again. Yike is not taking any damage. But Razor turns around. That arrow flies in onto Mickey, but they can't get the job done. Yike zones out now. And Jun is just in no man's land. Overheats, tries to get Mickey, but will not. The Sky is falling again, though, in the meantime. And G2 bide their time. Fnatic can't turn it around. G2 here is Yike is just soloing out the dragon. And the Caps is playing like. I mean, like, he's the Renekton. How nice is it watching Singularity as the stacks build up? But Caps, it is still a falling star, by oh, the way. Nice. We are going to get a replay. So, never mind, never no mind, because what's happening? It's another sky fall again. Man, everyone is just coming from the clouds. Yike, though, might die, getting burnt down by Jun. Close to dying, but gives the kill over to Humanoid. He TP'd for that, so it's a nice trade. Right. So yes, yes, yes. every 75 star does call the next one to transform into the sky's descent. Dominus in the meantime, though. Let's watch this. Call the meat comes through. Dunk oh, flashed away from. That does surprise me. Broken Blade, I think, showing a little too much respect there. But here comes Caps. Okay. Astral Flight comes through. And remember that ult there. Will he need it? Maybe in the end. No. He just breathes hot fire again. Eyes on the minimap because I see Caps roaming bots. Let the sky fall. And it crumbles. And Jun's just getting breezed on. But the arrow is good. It interrupts. Caps going to get traded. No one gets a big shutdown. Shockwave brings Broken Blade back in as well as Fnatic. Have Razork for backup. A good punish. G2 overconfident. And Fnatic snapped them back to reality. That just goes to show the damage of this Rumble support. Well played by Fnatic to get something. It's always about trading other things on the map. Second tower secured for G2 in mid lane. But Fnatic should be able to get one both top and bot okay. in exchange. So overall an equal trade in towers. The gold still in G2's favor. It just goes to show that Cap sometimes getting a little overzealous with this Iridian Soul True. and Humanoid poised to try and answer. You look at that goal difference now between the mid laners, non existent. On the side, thinking the same thing. 4v4 in the river. Broken Blade now shows Singularity, zones them out. Dragon at 2k as the top laners battle it out on the side. Ignore that for the time being because Razork thinking about the steal. Jumps on in, looks at the charge, smite down, and it goes over to Fnatic. But Razork looking to be the first to die. But as he flashes out the equalizer, zones him off. Meanwhile, Oscar Riddin doing his job on the backside, making sure BB can't be involved. But he'll cost his life for it. Caps with a kill still. Humanoid going to do the exact same thing top. And unfortunately for G2, there's nothing that they can. It's a very humble line. Mickey not getting caught out, maybe he is. Arrow comes through, hits Han Summer anyway. He's got cleanse, but he doesn't pop it. He doesn't pop it. Han Summer didn't want to cleanse. He flashes in the end. Yike has to flash as well as the fighter. He started with Caps getting a kill, but he too burns the summoner. And as Fnatic burned the Midnight Oil, they got Broken Blade in a pinch with Oscar Renan. Takes all the absorbed damage. Hans doesn't want to walk back in. Caps does, though. The astral flight from the dragon. He spins the wheel, turns around, but it's into Oscar Renan. Broken Blade flashes behind the set demon guy. And picks up a double. Now on to Noah. Make it a triple. Broken again. But now Noah has no one left to hide behind, and he loses his life. They expect Yike as we come back to live is in this pit, but as Shockwave comes through, here comes Caps flying in from nowhere again. The Singularity running through Caps in the middle of three people. The arrow will fly and try and get the punishes. Razork is still on top of him, but everyone is helping the big bad dragon. Razork at least getting the trade, but the problem is now, every time Caps dies, you've got to look. They're not going to go for it. They don't want to take the risk. Instead, they'll just be happy with the towers. Chosen to move in with his team. Oscar's angle. 
Hasn't been spotted. They don't oh, he know. Oh, snuck in, but again, they're kind of suspecting a Broken Blade playing coy until the culling comes out. And Oscar's just dead. And once again, let the skies oh. descend. But show 10 in for Humanoid. He gets dragged back in. Noah gets sent away. Yike cleans up the rest. And G2 are all class in this first game. Cax truly does control the stars in this game, and he uses them all to crush Fnatic underfoot. Another ace in favor of Fnatic. They secured the thing from out. But look at this alternate. It connects onto three. Jun is forced to flash, and it feels. Deal with it, and so they started banning it, and then you put those bans there. And remember that every game you always have to ban the Draven. Hang on. Again. Hang on. Singularity's out once again. The arrow hits. Yike equalized down, but it does nothing. And as the mighty sky falls a second time, it's a small one, but it's a good one. G2 know how to angle well as Oscar and Broken Blade fight it out in this. Renekton, look at the damage. Tanking up three, four turret shots. Keeps the time of Fnatic in the base. Hysteric Gage doing the same. He flash cues, trying to take on the world. He's still not dead, though. The rest of Fnatic want the kill, but Razork will die for it. Broken Blade baits them in bit by bit by bit. And at 25 minutes, now that final bit is ending the game. 10, 4, and 13 for Caps has involved them in 24 of the team's 27 kills off the back of this Star Dragon. G2 is looking to lock in game one. They're frustrating. Aren't they? They may finish third in the regular season, but in this game one, G2 look like in control again here at the start of this BO3. We talked about it. That aside, Fnatic, they do lock down the Nautilus, so they've got a bit of uh, hard committal engage if they want it, and the setup will be there if they can actually find uh, both Hans and Caps at some point. But to me, I feel like making a beeline towards top lane. How quick can he get in? Flash is available. Oscar has gone for the big trade here. The damage onto Broken Blade. Oscar flashes immediately, but Broken Blade matches that, and here's Yike. A stun up, and there's no unstoppable yet. First flight over to Yike. BB, as he walks forward, I mean, that top lane is where our eyes are, but we haven't talked about G2's bot. Razork now comes in, but over Yike, I mean, everyone's here from G2. Razork going in early. His E is not going to get the stun up. Yike comes back in. He's going to get the kill. Norin Jun can't add too much here. As Han's up again. The dragon looks like he'll take it as well, because you look at the minimap, ladies and gentlemen. Razork is mid. Nothing to speak of there as level 6 versus level 5, Broken Blade has the danger button to go onto Oscar Rinnan. He's not six yet. This could be a solo kill. like that solo kill potential, although it's still risky there for Oscar Rinnan. Undertow follows through, slowed down again. Prey Seeker, back and forth. Tunnel now use Oscar Rinnan, goes over it, picks up the Undertow again. I love how observant they're just stuck up here, but now that he's level six, Broken Blade, your time has come. Goes into the Void Rush, but as he comes out, Oscar Rinnan, he bide his time so well there. And now for Yike as he flashes over the wall, Oscar Rinnan, Really patient play, deserves the crowd chair. Yeah, he finally gets something back in a much needed moment of reprieve. We turn our attention back to top though. It's Already Broken Blade is here. He TP back in, Counter-Strike onto Yike, but Broken Blade tunnels in, Oscar in it. No doesn't ults. have that man, Rampage to go through. And with the damage that comes through, it's still a shutdown. But Broken Blade to get through, looking for the trade. Oh. Looking maybe for a window to roam Next down. Flash. Mickey looking for a dredge line, gets it, Jun misses the dredge line himself, excuse me. It's a depth that's now found as Rocket comes through, Razork absorbs the damage, but they turn for Jun. Yike trying to find his own kill as Mickey gets charged on by Noah, but he's sitting in front of Han Sama, who gets excited now onto Humanoid, cleans up the rest. As soon as that was... Probably the biggest point of criticism that they've had this year. Yep. And we heard Broxa talking about it on the desk where he said, they're going for more... Are up. Oh, I say Grub is up. Yike going to ignore it though. Going to walk over awards. Oscar. Yeah, Oscar, he, he needs to leave. And Yike has said, I'm here it's to evict you well. from the residence. No way he survives. Wait, yes, he does. Okay, that one fan very much an Oscar ridden fan as Yike is now caught in the middle of three people. Okay, scream louder. The shutdown for Humanoid. <laughs> I guess you should be if Fnatic are getting something back in this game. Broken Blade thinks that he is sitting in fog, but look at Jun making the pass around. Hello there. Broken Blade, the tunnel system is there. Jun trying to interrupt. Dredgeline pulls him back again. He's the tank, so he's trying to buy time, heal up, but he can't go underground. And Broken Blade drops down. Humanoid. Kill, the Humanoid could TP in and punish. Boy. Ooh, nice dash away from the hook. Thank you. That uh, is winning the lane, that he's not offering that much value, but he's having a great series so far. It's been well to be used again. The Ragnarok to run. Caps now in damage range though. Stormbringer turns off the turret. Oscar and runs out of the ulti and Yike runs his life down. Top turret in the meantime. That's Broken the kill. Blade. 
And we come back to this whole idea of the mid game of G2, the area that they've spent this entire year improving and around right now. That goal gap continues to grow. G2 looking for a collapse on a humanoid. He's got flash available. Where's that Valkyrie coming from? Death sentence to get into range with a flash match. Broken Blades underneath, double play. Those aerial to use Broken Blades in the back line goes deep. It's a one for one. Yike picks up the kill again, but now I'm worried about the bot side. Tarot is fanatic took a meaty trade for that as well. The idea being that Dragon spawns in 10 seconds time. There you go. Let's use TP to force them out before Fnatic can set up for the objective. And now even oh. Razok has gone back to base. G2 keep up the pressure. But Mickey took this fight, but now getting excited, it makes it worthwhile. Ooh. Trade Caps missing the ulti there. Noah gets over the wall. Nice play from Noah. Sidesteps the engage from Caps. Another member falls though. Yike pulls off the Dragon. Three members are alive for Fnatic. And sure. They're keen to still try and fight this Broken Blade. Obviously used his TP in the last exchange. Gonna start making their way back out. I don't think this brawl is over yet. But Noah has no ulties at half HP coming in. Hunt, I'm using Ranger's TP. Flies through, there's the Quick Strikers. Onto Yike, he's gonna find the stun. Razork starting a stop and a mute in the backside. But uh, Captain Hans Summer ordering for their life. Humanoid used the package but doesn't get the kill. The flash away, Hans not gonna burn today. Yike died in the meantime, but Caps flies through the skies faster than a dog on a weird carriage. As Noah, oh, the no broken blade steals it. A shut down and now more to come. Razork low, Hans Summer between them as well. His zap zones out. He doesn't want to get near the fight, but don't worry about it. He's says counter-strike there but broken blade follows through you get into these team fights and G about 15 seconds broken blade will secure a tower and cheating of the exchange the commitment onto humanoid is a bit too deep and broken blade loses his life in exchange but baron comes up in 30 seconds as dragon will be coming up as a sole priority fanatic now looking to fight off the back end humanoid poking from afar look who's who isolated it's mickey Caps can't get the T there. Noah runs away. Yike just zones off, threatens off. Broken Blade doing the same thing as well. Inner turret goes down. This Herald's going to get a charge mid. Look at where Razork is, Vedius. Nowhere nearby. Humanoid, nowhere nearby. Fnatic is a three core. I've just been out rotated on. Noah trying to get away from Broken Blade. They're going to try and punish him, but in their own base. Again, they're not trading well. Comes down his Yike. The rocket is there. Getting excited. Hard Summer finds range. Noah there too as Mickey. He flashed for that play, doesn't find it, but on the meantime, they've got a juicy mid laner. I mean, G2 seems to think so as Han Summer gets the range once again. What a mistake! They leave open mid, they look for the fight after it. No summoners on Noah may have cost them as well as they all run back. And G2, it's 20 minutes, almost 21. Cap says no, not this time. Noah drops down, and that is the best team in Europe. They're already going to MSI but they want spring as well. Welcome to the upper bracket. Well, they, they shouldn't have tried to force those skirmishes in the early game, and G2 were very quick to take punish, uh, take advantage of that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we end out our day, and not end it out a week, because remember, we're back tomorrow, we get to toss to an interview with Hans Sama and Mickey X on stage with Ginny. Thank you so much, Vidi and XD Derricks. We appreciate it. Thank you guys as well for joining me. Congratulations on okay. your win. Okay. I thought I'd bring out the bot lane duo because we haven't heard from you guys in a little bit. And it feels like there have been changes in the bot lane. So I want to start with discussing those, maybe potentially your Thresh pick, particularly not a champion that you're unfamiliar with, but still, what was the reasoning behind it? Well, I think the Thresh was just kind of nice with Jinx because we wanted to pick Jinx there because they left it open to 4-5. And it just seemed to make sense with Volibear as well. It was just like kind of a pretty safe blind as well. So that's kind of why I picked it. And I have a good win rate on it, so I was like pretty confident. <laughs> What's the win rate? Win. I don't know, it's like 80%, so that's pretty good. Ooh. That's pretty good, okay. You guys in Bali, though, like Hansama, I want to turn this question towards you in terms of the AD carriers that are being picked, in terms of how it feels like more so we're focusing towards the top lane, the bot lane, you just want to scale later on. How have you been working on behind the scenes in terms of a increase in your own personal performances, because obviously we've seen the spring, we've seen a couple of losses here and there, but then coming into playoffs, you guys have kind of just picked everything back up. Um, I think going towards the playoff, it's like a very different uh, meta with the uh, AD carry changes, or like uh, there's more champions that can be played on the AD carry role. Uh, there's a lot of hyper carry, like a uh, lot of Zeri, a lot of Jinx, so uh, we were, I guess, uh, focusing on that hyper carry meta a lot more. Uh, in the um, like in our team, and uh, also I think the strong ideas being still strong, uh, strong early game 
uh, that they have to ban every single game. <laughs> is this your favorite meta? Hyper carries, is that what you would like to play forever? Uh, I think hyper carry is pretty fun meta. Uh, it does so much damage, so it's definitely super fun for me. <laughs> you, uh, I see you saying, hmm, you're not, you're not an enjoyer of the hyper carries? You no. just want to like go roam? I want to fight early. Go, okay, fair. You just but yeah, I'm just go. farming. It's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> you got to help the any carries, right, throughout that laning phase. So that is your job, <laughs> like a little bit of a babysitter. But in terms of in playoffs, I feel like, as we've already mentioned, you guys have had a really significant improvement. What exactly are is the final goal? Of course, we know you guys already lifted the trophy in winter. Is it still the same goal? Is it going to that international event and representing EU to the best of your possibility? Yeah, pretty much winning every game here in Europe and then going internationally and actually perform there compared to last year. Actually hopefully, perform. Hopefully win there as well. <laughs> you don't have to bring that back. It's okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll let it slide this time Thank around. You. For you, Hansama? Oh uh, yeah, definitely uh, dominating uh, the playoffs uh, run uh, spring split uh, here in EU because uh, uh, last time we didn't win it uh, last year. We won winter, but we didn't win spring, and we'd like to do a back-to-back -back, uh, title for towards the MSI. I think when we went to uh, MSI before, that was with like a big loss. Uh, not going as a first seed, so that felt a bit uh, not the greatest. Uh, but this time around, going there uh, with the title would be very amazing. So uh, yeah, definitely going to try our best uh, to, to really beat uh, the Asian teams. Definitely on a great track for that. I mean, you guys are looking forward to that back-to-back -back title. Potentially, you know, like, I don't want to jinx anything. But I want to talk more about your synergy as well together in the bot lane because we've seen you guys competing together for a while. How do you, first of all, get that synergy, but then also maintain it? Well, I guess getting the synergy is just about how people are on, like, just the human level, if they can talk to each other normally. I think me and Steven are pretty good at that. We talk to each other a lot. And that's also how we can keep improving on it. And yeah, we're both pretty open-minded, so it's not that hard. Uh, yeah, just uh, we're willing to uh, work with each other, like talk a lot about the game, uh, what we can optimize, uh, something about the bot lane. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, that's very important in our AD carry support uh, relationship. <laughs> Aww, that's really cute. Well, thank you guys so much for the interview. I appreciate it. We're ready to be heading over to the VGL with Lord Jamada, Roma, and Isma. So, Lord, please do take it away.